Welcome back everyone and thanks for coming. We've been talking about cross-sectional studies, talking about their limitations in the sense that they have multiple reasons for explaining any association you see with cross-sectional data. But now what I'd like to do is just show you some sources that you might use for doing cross-sectional studies because they are a good starting point for developing a career or a series of research projects addressing the relationship between some risk factor and some outcome. So where can you readily get your hands on uh, cross-sectional data? Well, fortunately in this country, uh, we have a number of national surveys that are done essentially each year. And often these data are available to investigators to use. And you can use these to address hypotheses that you are interested in that might be answerable using cross-sectional data. Now the source for most of these national surveys is something called the National Center for Health Statistics. Now that's part of our Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. It's part of CDC. And I've given you here the website, the link, that you can go to learn more about the various surveys that they do. Some of these surveys are done annually, and you can report trends over time in our country in terms of prevalence of disease or associations you might capture from cross-sectional studies, each done on a separate annual survey of data. Others are done periodically to address specific health issues that might be important in one year but less important in another year. Now, some of these data are collected by personal interviews of individuals where they send survey takers, interviewers around the country to, to interview selected individuals uh, at, at various locations in this country. Others are collected by using routinely collected data for other sources. Vital statistics, as we talk about, measuring things like birth and death. If you enter the world in this country, and being born, you have to build, fill a, a birth certificate. If you leave this world in this country, you have to have someone has to fill out a death certificate. That information, routinely collected in our country, is also the source of some of the survey information that's reported by this National Center for Health Statistics. Now, let's talk more in the detail about some of the specific surveys that are available through this center. They have four major programs for collecting data. And I'm going to talk in detail about two of those, or I should say in more detail about two of those. One is called the National Health and Nutritional Examination Survey, NHANES, using its letters. This is a detailed survey of the health and nutritional status of Americans. Every uh, year, surveys are being done of, of individuals surveying in terms of their health status and also surveying aspects of, the, of their nutritional status. And I'll talk more about NHANES in a few minutes. Another important survey that we have is called the National Health Interview Survey, the NHIS. That's an interview of people living in selected households around this country where interviewers go to household and interview members of families living in that particular household. And again, I'll talk a little bit more about that study in detail in a moment. Two other important surveys they do is one is called the National Health Care Survey, where they interview health care providers and health care organizations. They go to doctors' offices and they, they review medical charts. They go to hospitals and review medical charts. And then finally, there's the National Vital Statistical System, the NVSS. That's where they're using information from birth certificates and death certificates to measure health status of the, of the United States. In addition to these major programs, they have three others that are targeted to specific health issues. There's something called the National Survey of Family Growth. There's a state and local area integrated telephone surveys. And there's the National Immunization Survey. And these are also described on the web page of the National Center for Health Statistics. But what I'd like to do is say a few words about the first of those two surveys I mentioned, the NHANES and the National Health Interview Survey. Now, the NHANES, the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey, um, information about it is available at the following website. I'd suggest you going to the website to get more information about it. That website contains two very useful videos. One video gives a history of the NHANES, what they're trying to do, what they've been doing, how long they've been at it. The other is an actual tour of a part of the NHANES survey by viewing what are known as mobile examination centers. As the NHANES is made up of two sources of information, 
interviews of people selected um, to, uh, from around the country and also tests performed on individuals in those areas in which they bring these four large trailers, these mobile examination centers, link them together to essentially make a large building from these trailers and within those four trailers they have the testing facilities to measure a large amount of health information on those people uh, and this video gives you detailed descriptions about what they do or, or better what would happen to you if you were selected to be part of the NHANES uh, study and invited to attend one of these mobile examination centers. The purpose of the NHANES is to look at health and nutrition of the United States both adults and children. Each year they visit approximately 15 areas, counties in the United States and they end up enrolling and interviewing around 5,000 people each year. The process involves two stages. One is a personal interview and one is an examination. The examination is done at these mobile examination centers, these four connecting trailers that are put together. Now data from the NHANES is made publicly available to anyone, not just living in the states but living anywhere. The data is limited. They don't have the full data set of everything they're collecting, but anyone can go onto their website and, and request uh, or download this publicly open data set, this public resource of data set. More information is available if you uh, restricted information, additional information, but there you have to fulfill a special agreement with the, with the NHANES. So additional information can be obtained above and beyond what's available in these, in these publicly downloadable data sets. So NHANES is a very useful source for doing cross-sectional studies based on these surveys that are done every year throughout parts of the United States. Another source of cross-sectional data is called is the National Health Interview uh, Survey, and again, information about it is available on its web page. Basically, this is solely an interview of members living in a household. What they do is create a representative survey, essentially a random survey, of households existing in the United States. Within each of these households, they interview family members to measure the health status of people living in those households. The way the survey is conducted is in two steps, this multi-sage sampling scheme. First what they do is they randomly select what is known as primary sampling units, these PSUs, from around the country. Now these primary sampling units might be a county of the United States, or it might be a series of small counties that are physically located near one another, or it might be part of a large city, a large metropolitan area. Essentially what they do is they randomly select each year a series of, of these primary sampling units to select for their National Health Interview Survey. Within each of these PSUs, they then select at random households within those PSUs to be the households that the interviewer would then go to to interview family members living at, in those households to determine their, their health status. They record demographic information. They record information about both acute and chronic disease. They record information about health care utilization, how often you see your physicians, how often you go to the hospitals, and things like that. What they're asking is a series of core questions that they ask each year. So you can look at trends over time. Plus they ask additional questions that might be specific for one year to address a certain concern of the health of the country at that particular year. Those are two well-known sources for collecting data for doing cross-sectional studies. If you remember, a few lectures ago we were talking about ecologic studies. I gave you an example looking at the relationship between obesity and depression in each of the 50 states of the United States. That information was obtained from another source, the Behavioral Risk Factor Surveillance System, the BRFSS. This is something that's existed since the mid-80s. Again, it's, part, it's published as part of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, our CDC. You can find information about it and about all these survey data sets by going to their web page. But basically what this is, is a series of information collected within each state. It's a state-based series uh, uh, surveys based on telephone surveys. It's the, each year they survey roughly 350,000 people living in the United States in, the, in our various 50 states. It's the largest telephone health survey that's in the world in, the, in that sense and it collects information on risk factors as you as you suspected by its title both in preventive health practices access to health care for 
related to chronic disease and injury. What they report from these surveys is the essentially the average risk factor status for a population. So for example, what we, I was reporting in that previous slide was the prevalence of obesity for each of our 50 states, comparing that to the prevalence of depression for each of those 50 states. So it's a very good source for ecologic studies as we used in the example that we had a few lectures ago. Well, these are just a, a sample of the types of survey data that's available for in the United States to, to build cross-sectional studies. So cross-sectional studies have the positive attribute of being based on data that might be readily available. They're a good starting point for starting a career in epidemiology, looking at associations between risk factors and outcomes. But remember, cross-sectional data is based on prevalence looking at the prevalence of, say, some characteristic in one group of people compared to the prevalence of characteristic in another group of people. Prevalence of, prevalence of heart disease among smokers versus non-smokers in the example of what we just gave. Problem with cross-sectional data is related to the problems of prevalence. There are many reasons for finding an association between two factors using cross-sectional data, using prevalence data. What we'd like to have is more detailed data if we're primarily interested in looking at the risk of developing disease in one group of people than another group of people. There we have to use other types of study designs. That's when we epidemiologists use study designs such as cohort studies, case control studies, and experimental studies. Those are the three topics for the next three series of lectures that I will be giving. So next time we get together, we're going to be talking about experimental studies first and the basic study design around one type of an experimental study known as a randomized control trial. So I'll talk more about that when we see you next time. So see you then. Goodbye.